Okay, Turbo, here's the deal. I have to sit on the ground to film this one, so you got it. You can't get in the pool, bud. Yeah, fat chance I'm gonna be sopping wet by the time we're done talking about this one. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great, gloomy day, hopefully. Things are gonna come through on camera how they need to be. We talk about this hardy aeroid, Typhonium giganteum, sometimes called Ceromatum giganteum. I think that that's the newer classification. Not sure which came first there. I think Typhonium's the older name for this one. It's a plant I've been growing for a very long time, like a very long time. I lost its name, so couldn't do a video on it without the proper identification, but now I have it, so let's talk about it. Because I could set something down. Okay, all right, okay. Earful of dog nose, careful turbo. That close, I knew that this was gonna be difficult. You know how dogs are, when you get down on their level, they get very excited. The Gigantium. I've released a couple videos giving top 25 lists of plants that look tropical, but are more cold hardy. This one made the last list once I was able to find the name of it. You know, if you don't have the proper name of the plant, you can't really talk about it all that much. With the Soromatums and the uh, Typhoniums, there are several different types that look kind of similar to the Gigantium. I mean, not really, but it was enough that I wasn't comfortable doing a whole video dedicated to them if I didn't have their full name. Who doesn't love a hardy aeroid? The draw to me with this plant are the very long, beautiful leaves that are heavily veined. They give a look that's similar to a xanthosoma. The biggest leaf on this one is back here and it's got some sun damage on them, all of these do. From the sinus and down, this one's measuring about 16 inches, that big, big guy right here. Great big leaf on these. These will usually grow about two feet tall, sometimes a little bit bigger than that. They offset very readily. So every year you can expect more and more and more of them to come up from wherever you've planted them. These being a type of voodoo lily, they do put up a very interesting flower. It's not a very large one for the voodoo lilies, but it does have that nice stinky stank that a lot of people love about these plants. These are typically hardy zone 7A and up. That's where most places list them. I'm in zone 6B, I'm in St. Louis, so right on the line of 6A and 6B. And this one has been in the ground for me since I believe 2014 or 2015. That's a solid eight or nine years that this has been in this location. And this spot in the garden doesn't get any protection. However, it's near some spots that get a lot of protection. We have a big banana clump over here that gets very heavily mulched and have these gorgeous flaming torch gingers up here that also get very heavily mulched. And those are each probably a couple feet away from this clump of plants here. The spot in the garden, you can't tell because it's, well, it's covered in plants and a weed. How embarrassing, I'm right next to it and I didn't pick that and I'm not going to, I'm not trying to be perfect here, I'll get it later. This is all sloped for drainage. There's a French drain in the front of the garden and the back of the garden so that no water can go towards the house or build up underneath this patio here. So with that being a slope, that means that it's a spot that's also more exposed during the winter. That's why I have to mulch so, so heavily with the hardy tropicals that I have because everything is raised up and more exposed. But this spot right here in the middle where I have these, no protection, but they are near spots that get a lot of protection. They're also near some pavement that can help with hardiness. It's not unusual for us to have dips into the negatives a few times every single winter. Last winter we saw temperatures, I believe, of negative 13 degrees for a few days. I think that was the max, but for a few days we were in the negatives and they still came back. So I would say 7A is being a bit conservative. If you're in zone six, I think this plant is worth a try. That's the whole, that's why we're here. Hardy aeroids, right? There are a lot more aeroids that you can try out or a lot more voodoo lilies. Soromatums, Amorphophyllus, Typhoniums, there are a lot more you can try in zone seven. When you get into zone six, you start to get limited, especially when it comes to leaf structure. The Gigantium has the coolest foliage. There are Colocaceas that you can grow here. They need a lot of mulch. You don't know if they're going to come back, but none of them have the definition that these plants have when it comes to that heavy sinus, nice sharp lobes, very long leaves. They give me, if you were to cross, cross, if you were to cross a xanthosoma with like a anthurium vicii, more so when they get larger and you start to get these very big leaves on them that are, you know, 15 to 18 inches. And that's on the max end. This is one of the biggest leaves I've ever seen this plant put out. Most of the leaves that come out are more typically about a foot, 
something like that, sometimes just a little bit bigger, has a really nice one coming up from the back. This one has been growing very, very well this year. I probably should have filmed this video maybe two or three weeks ago before the impatiens were quite this big. So they're starting to swallow them up, which they do every single year. The Gigantiums, they typically don't sprout up. I don't see any signs of growth from these usually until like mid-June, sometimes not even until July. They lay dormant for a pretty long time. So that's one drawback with them. But once they start going, it's almost instantaneous that you have something beautiful going on. It's not like they put up a leaf once a week or something like that. It's seemingly almost overnight. They start to grow and then by the end of the week, you have a very nice flush out of a lot of leaves. Which makes sense once you have an established colony of all those tubers in the ground and each one's putting up a growth and they all do that at the same time. It's just boom, you have a nice flush out of beautiful, great big aeroid, tropical looking leaves. Once temperatures start to cool, day lengths start to shorten, these start to die back on their own, just you know, like most perennials do. There have been occasions when I've been growing these during extremely hot summers. There have been Julys that we've had where we'll have many, many, many days in the triple digits and just unrelenting sun on all this pavement out here that can cook these. This is the first year where I've only seen just a little bit of cookage on them. <laughs> I do attribute a lot of that to there being pavement. I mean, look at all this, there's pavement everywhere. Sun bounces off of that and it, it can cook them. I don't know if that's going to be an issue for most people, but just thought I should mention it. Nice, warm, humid summers. That's what get these plants growing. Organically rich, well-drained soil, of course, needs to be airy because they can rot off fairly easily, especially in containers. If you have these in a container, need to be much more aware of the soil that you're using in the ground i don't worry about it as much like a good amount of moisture these respond very well to when we have a good amount of rain despite having sprinklers and drip over here rain really gets them going when it's nice warm and rainy start to see a lot of growth on them these are also usually listed as a plant that prefers part shade but I have noticed that the more sun I've been getting over in this area, the more growth I've been getting out of them. So I did some reading on that just to make sure that I was remembering correctly the lighting requirements for these. And then on Plant Delights Nursery's website, they mentioned moving theirs to full sun and them just exploding in growth. I think they said full sun. The spot right here, I would call part sun. It gets late morning sun into early afternoon sun and then some shade and things get weird because there's a hill with trees on it behind me and they get another burst of sun for maybe an hour later in the day but i don't know if that really does much for them the time of day that that comes through the point there being if these were getting more sun they would probably be much more full by now because i've had these for like i said somewhere between eight and ten years that's a pretty long time and every single year they don't just put up one they can put up multiple new plants every single year so i would expect to see more than this but thanks to some tree pruning that happened at my neighbor's house this summer there's a lot more sun over here than there used to be so getting more growth so i would recommend planting them someplace where they're going to get at least six hours of sun a day they would probably do well with that if you live in a really hot dry climate then shade in the afternoon that's usually a good idea to keep the plants from scorching oh and the new foliage comes up this really nice glossy green isn't that beautiful they usually maintain some of that glossy greenness for a while for a few weeks you can see it on some of the growth back here nice glossy shiny good looking green leaves overall just fun neat tropical looking plants i cannot really think of anything that's good into zone six that's me saying zone six not everybody else my experience, zone six, these have been hardy, that give this much of a tropical exotic flair. This just screams jungle aeroid when you look at it. And they're so incredibly easy to grow. There are Peltandras, those can be pretty cool. We'll be talking about those too at some point, but still, there's nothing. Xanthosomas, sure, but they're not hardy in zone six. Lots of alocases and colocases that have some crazy foliage on them, but None of those are reliably hardy in zone six, at least not the ones with foliage that's anywhere similar to this. There's a bikini teenies over here. Those have been hardy in zone six, but it's still, it's just not the same vibe. Yeah, I'd say try them out. Give them a shot if you can find them. They're not always the easiest plants to find. I was lucky enough to get on Etsy and find someone who was selling some. I can show you what those look like. There's some little four inch pots, not much to them yet. I guess it would make more sense to go look at them and then talk about them, right? He laid directly behind me that entire time. I cannot believe that I pulled that off, sat on the ground and I'm not sopping wet right now. Here they are. Lots of little babies, 
four of them. You can see each one of these does have a lot of growth coming up from the inside. Don't know if that's because these are full of lots of little bulblets, all the little bits that break off, or if these were grown from seed. When you look in here at the root mass, you can see that these are just full of lots and lots and lots of little bulblets. So when these get bigger, the one that I just showed you, it, if you were to dig it up, it just, it looks like a potato once you've had them for a few years. It just looks like a medium to small size potato that usually has all the little bulblets, tuberlets, little tiny offsets on the sides that break off very, very, very easily. So it's very easy to divide them up and spread them around. I am just trusting that this person sent me giganteums because there are other typhoniums that look very similar when they're smaller like this. So it really won't be until next year that I can say for sure but that looks pretty accurate to me. It also looks kind of similar to one of the others, but I'm just going to assume that it's the right plant. So I'm gonna be spreading these around the garden in various areas where they'll be getting close to full sun, not quite full sun. I don't really have many full sun spots in my garden anymore, but that way I'll be able to really test out and see, uh, is it just that spot that they've been really hardy? They'll be able to have a closer look at what spots are working for them, what spots aren't. If I have some areas that are more cold in my garden that are more exposed, like up above everything back here on this wall, plus winter protection. I won't really be able to report back on that until next year. And I have even debated, uh, since these are just tiny little babies, each one of those leaves is just attached to a tiny little bulb, potentially storing these dormant, which isn't really a very difficult thing to do. Just when the time of year comes, the nighttime temps start to cool and the day lengths shorten, reduce watering, they will yellow off, die back on their own. And uh, you can, if you want to, pull them from their soil, clean the tuber off, get any loose roots that are on it off of there. The roots on these tend to pop right off once they've dried up and the plant's gone dormant. And stores them someplace that is cool, dark, and dry until probably, uh, I would say, uh, March or April. And get them potted back up, resume watering, get them in the ground once chances of frost have left. That's how I'd have to do it for where I live. You can also, not necessarily the most advisable way to do it, but I have on many occasions with sorrow maidens just let them die back to the surface of the soil cut the foliage off and stored the entire plant in the soil someplace cool dark and dry and just resumed watering when it felt like it was time for them to get going again which is generally march april because there's such an abundance of them i'll probably go ahead and throw some of these in the ground and store some for the winter time just to be sure because when the tubers are that tiny i don't know how well they'll survive the winter but i have all the ones that i just showed you before and as those have developed and spread, that's from those tiny little bulbs that pop off the sides, those tiny tubers. Yeah, we'll give it time, see what happens. Yeah, that's going to do it. Comment down below some of your favorite hardy aeroids. This is, like I said, it's gotta be my favorite. No other leaf really compares. <laughs> that's what I thought. Didn't take long, sopping wet. I said, this one's gotta be my favorite. Much character, so much tropical aesthetic. I mean, look at that. Come on, that's just a beautiful plant. You would not look at that and think, oh yeah, that's good in zone six. When I see this, I think Indonesia. I think very tropical, beach, jungle, not St. Louis. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, do not shake off on the camera. Good boy. Why don't you go ahead and get out of it? Come over here. Turbo, come on, go on, go on, go on. Thank you, baby. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.